This is Jonah from Typewriter Minutes. Today we are going to be doing a for sale review of a 1948 Remington Model 7 Noiseless. We picked this machine up a couple months ago and it was in really good shape when we got it. Had to do a little bit of cleaning but not a whole lot. Had to do a few adjustments like tightening the mainspring and some other minor things. Give it a light cleaning. But this thing looks like it came straight out of a time machine. Let me pass off the camera here. So you'll see the decals or the paint. I don't know if that's painted or decals. Might be painted. Um, but they're pretty much flawless. We'll go back here. Nothing is rubbed off. Looks just like it did when it came out of the factory. We'll come into the back here. Usually these are marked up somewhere, scratched, and you can see that thing's just about perfect. So, really excellent shape. And I don't know if we got lucky or if the feed rollers and platen were replaced at some point. Because the platen still is soft. I can get my fingernail in it. And the feed rollers definitely are soft uh, back here. So, I don't know if it... If if it wasn't replaced or if they weren't replaced at some point then I just got lucky and this machine was stored somewhere where the rubber didn't get hard over the years or didn't get as hard because it passes the fingernail or the thumbnail test. So you'll see on the typing test these things actually are a lot quieter than a regular typewriter. The type bar has a different action to it. There's a little guy that comes back here that comes out and pushes it towards the platen. And the design of that, coupled with the relatively soft platen, you'll see makes it a fairly quiet typer. It's not 100% noiseless, but they probably didn't want to call it the Remington less noisy, so Remington noiseless it is. And you'll see here has round uh, plastic or celluloid keys. There's no dedicated one, an exclamation mark, so for your lowercase, you have to use a lowercase L for the number one, and then a, an apostrophe backspace period to get an exclamation mark. It's a carriage shift machine with a shift lock on the left side. Over here you have your touch control for light, heavy touch. Let's move that guy back and forth. Here's your ribbon color selector for Red, you can see the red's a little faded. Red stencil and black position over here. I like the design touches on this. This has a little chrome ball here. There's another little chrome ball up here. So just kind of a neat design. This little button here is for the manual ribbon reverse. So if you push that, the ribbon starts winding the other way. And then there's a button over here on the other side. Push that, and that's how you do your manual ribbon reverse. It does have automatic ribbon reverse. If you've seen the Remington Quiet Rider, you'll recognize the spools or the lack of regular spools. It's just a design that was unique to Remington and it's a little bit of a pain to rewind ribbon onto these because there's no plastic spool that just pops in and out. You have to actually wind it onto the original mechanisms here. And then this guy, you would think that that screws off the way that that's designed, but it's not. It's just a press-on fit. So we'll put that in there. Oh, and so the automatic ribbon reverse, you do not need eyelets on this machine. It's a little, there's a little foot that pops out when all the ribbon is off, exactly like the Remington Quiet Rider. And so when all the ribbon's off, that little foot pops out and there's a mechanism underneath that causes the ribbon reverse. So anyway, do not put eyelets on this machine. Put that guy back on there. There we go. Okay, does not have a paper bale. Just has paper finger here and over here, slide back and forth. Plus this guy here, the combination of these two guys, this guy and the paper fingers do a pretty good job keeping the paper flush to the platen. I'm gonna pass off the camera again to Jonah. I'll show you how the carriage lock works. 
So this little chrome ball here and the knob together are part of the, the uh, carriage lock. So when you're ready to put it in the case, push this chrome ball that way, or pull it that way, and make sure the knob's pushed in, and then, then it's locked. If you look in there, you can see there's the locking mechanism right there. And when you're ready to take it out of the case and unlock it, you just pull the right knob out. So now it's unlocked. So uh, that's your carriage lock. Here's your paper release lever right here. Your, get your paper in crooked, just flip that guy up and flip it, flip it back when you're done. There's two carriage release levers, one here, one on the left side. So that's a nice touch instead of having just one. This whole back plate, let me grab this back, flips back, way back. And then you have access to your little tab stops, manual tab stops. You can pull those off and set them wherever you want. And that's also how you get to your uh, margin sliders, just a push, push and slide margin stops. So then that flips back up and then there's your tab key right there. Okay, round to the back side. Not much to see there other than the gorgeous paint or decal on the back. And you can't really get to the tab stops from back here. That's why you gotta flip this guy back to get to them. Over on this side here, here's your variable line space. Push that knob in and the clicks go away so you can type wherever you need to on a form, get it exactly where you need it. Over here is your line space lever, single, double space, triple space. It does have a, a paper guide right there, sliding paper guide. You really keep it on zero. I think that about covers it for the features. Jonah, have I missed anything? I don't think so. Okay. Well, we'll hand this back. I'm going to tip it up and show you the bottom real quick. So the feet are in good shape. They're not super soft, but they're not cracking either. So the feet are very serviceable. You can see how nice and clean it is under there. All right, put that guy down. Okay, I think that about covers it for the features. All right, one thing I forgot to mention about the tight basket here. On each side, there's a little doodad that flicks back and forth. There's one there, and then one on the left side. So, there we go. And they just flick back and forth. It's kind of curious, the instruction manual doesn't mention anything about them. But when you flick it this way, this little guy here pushes up against this front paper scale. So I believe that's part of the card holder system. If you're doing an index card or something and you want it held tighter to the platen, you flick these guys up. Now let's look at the case. So the gentleman I bought this typewriter from kept labels on all his typewriters, and that's kind of nice. You can see there, 1948 Remington Model 7. Case is in excellent shape. No tears, no scratches, no rust. It's got these uh, metal feet on the bottom. So really in excellent shape. Pull the or squeeze these guys here to unlock it, and there you get to the inside. Has a cleat in the back that goes into the little slot in the back of the machine, and then these guys here. Well, we'll go ahead and put the machine in. So be very careful putting the back slot in. You don't want this thing to get scratched. These guys here keep it locked in. So now, now your machine is locked in. And when you want to get it out, there's one of these on each side. One there, one there. Just push them down. 
lift the front up and then slide it forward so you don't scratch the back. Hopefully the case doesn't fall off the table while I'm doing this. And that's about it. You can see the inside is in excellent shape. So this thing really is time machine both for the typewriter and the case. And now for the type test. Real quick, we do have the original instruction manual. Richard Polt has a lot of these scanned in and you can get reproductions online thanks to all his good work. But it is nice to have the original when you can get it. All right, for the type test, we use two pieces of paper. You can probably get away with one given the soft platen, but we'll use two. We'll do a couple lines on black. I don't know how this is gonna come across in the video, but it is uh, quieter than a regular typewriter, just the way these type bars come up and are pushed against the platen. So it's not completely noiseless, but it is quieter. here you can see the output is really good so if you're looking for a somewhat quieter machine to take with you to type in a coffee shop or if you're looking for a machine that won't keep everybody up at night as you're typing away this just might be for you the noiseless typewriters do have a little bit of a different feel to them I don't know how to describe it you'll just have to try it yourself uh, nice to type on, just a different typing feel. And again, you probably can't tell over the video, but definitely is quieter than a regular typewriter. If you're interested in buying this typewriter, you can contact us directly, or we'll put the link to the eBay sale in the comments below. Thank you for joining us on Typewriter Minutes. Be sure to share, link, like, and subscribe. Bye!